Welcome back. I'm CJ. This is the Amish Potato. Today we're taking a look at the teardrop that I built. For those of you who are new to this channel or here for the teardrop, this is not my normal content. I was raised Amish in Shipshawana, Indiana. I moved to Idaho for nine years. Now we live in Michigan again. Normally I talk, my content is about the ins and outs of Amish people. False doctrine, the good things, the bad things, whatever it may be. So I, being the visionary, am the dreamer. I put this all together. And me, typically, I love doing that. That is the, the best part of a project is to imagine it, to design it, and to, to just dream of how it all works. Um, and when it comes to the building part, I am gung-ho at first, and then, then I just, it just, I procrastinate. It takes a lot of effort and push to get it done. That was the case with this. I dreamed it up, all excited, started building. Um, but that was six years ago, and I am just now kind of finishing it up. <laughs> I just now put the kitchen in the back. I worked for Jayco for 14 years, 11 years in Middlebury, Indiana, three years in Idaho. Uh, I started building this when I worked at Jayco in Idaho, and um, it, that's where I got some of these parts and the method of building. I bought the axle and the front A-frame off of a guy at, who works at Jayco. Uh, they were rejected for some reason, some little flaw that they couldn't sell or couldn't put on a new trailer. Um, he fixed whatever it was, and uh, he sold it to me for a great price. The same way with all three wheels, the rims had holes in it. You just put a weld in it, good to go. I have an insulated floor. Underneath that floor is uh, Darko. I got it from Jayco. That's what the RV manufacturers use um, on the bottom of their trailers. It's kind of like a tarp, but it's black. Um, and they call it Darko. I don't know if that's the brand, I'm not sure. It's just what we called it while working at the RV factories. Um, and I don't know if it's possible getting a hold of some. Maybe some of these RV surplus stores in southern Michigan have them, not sure. Because I bought axle, rejected axles, and I didn't get to pick the size, I had to make the frame 64 and a half inches wide, 65 inches wide. But it's eight feet long, the box is eight feet long. So basically, it is a five by eight with a queen size bed in it. The walls, how I built the walls was um, I put quarter inch luon on the outside that the quarter inch luon that you would buy at the home depot and i put a quarter inch luon on the inside uh with inch and a half studs on the in between them so it's built basically with a stick frame like some of these cheaper rvs are built and then i just sandwiched put two pieces of luon on each side and then glued the fiberglass on the outside i do have insulation between the walls it's just the batten insulation I was hoping to do foam, but I can't remember why I switched. As you probably noticed, it is a poor man's fiberglass finish on the outside. So that is simply uh, canvas painted on the side of wood. A lot of people will use tight bond to glue that canvas to the side of the wood. I skipped that step. I think that would, I think that's a must if you're building a boat with the poor man's fiberglass. But I simply took some primer, painted primer on the wood. I painted my one side of primer on my canvas drop cloth, drop canvas that you would buy at any home improvement store that you'd lay on the floor for painting. I painted one side of that and while they were still wet, I stuck them together. And then I painted more coat after coat of primer on the outside to try to get it smoother. And then the final coat is um, a flat paint outside, just exterior paint that you would use for a house. I did this because I was very interested in this process. I was very curious how well it works. People have built boats with this method. Um, so I figured, well, why not? Why not try it? Um, with the full intention of if it doesn't turn out that I can take the trim off and the windows out and I can put aluminum on the side. It is doing a fantastic job. I was worried about the flat paint picking up a lot of dirt, but it washes off nicely. It's just, it's holding up. Um, most of its life, it's been stored inside, uh, full disclosure, but this past year since March here in Michigan, with the snow, with the rain, 
sun it's doing it's doing great it's been outside since march so and it's been doing great i'm impressed it does look a little homemade you can um you can see a few wrinkles that i didn't get out make sure if you're doing this that you uh yeah try to iron out those wrinkles get your fabric wet and then paint it on the side um this thing is about nine and a half feet long as far as the box and the, the and the drop cloth to fit it had a seam in it. So I had to take the seam apart and I do have a seam above uh, right there where the window's at. And those are a little bit visible. There are a few bubbles, D-lambs, what you would call them, but it's not from the fabric coming loose from the wood. It's, uh, it's from the wood plywood, the top ply coming away from the other rest of the wood that it's glued to. You can see the nails, the seams in the poor man's fiberglass. I was hoping that you could just sand, you know, put sand it, put more paint on it, sand it, and it'll come out smooth. Maybe with enough coats you can, but paint does not sand very well. And it, yeah, it sucks sanding paint. So don't expect too much of a smooth finish. However, a lot more guys have been using this method. They probably have better tips than I do. The windows. My brother got for me while he worked at the Keystone RV company here in Indiana. He sent them out to me while I was in Idaho. Thank you, John, you rock. These, uh, these are slam latch cargo doors that go on RVs. Typically they're turned with the latch on the bottom. These are 20 by 30. You know, they're a bit tiny for teardrop doors, but they have worked great so far. They were a lot cheaper at 30 bucks a piece versus 300 for an actual teardrop door. They are kind of loud in campgrounds. Um, and typically they do not have um, a latch on the inside because you only open them from the outside. But inside there was a threaded hole. So I just took some handles from the heart that I found at the hardware. Um, it kind of turns. I just threaded it into that hole. And so now all you have to do is slide. I also added this, this regular kitchen cabinet door handle. So you can pull it shut from the inside. And uh, that opens the latch from the inside. And if we want to lock it, very primitive, caveman-like, it works. Saved us 270 bucks for normal doors. So the trim around the whole teardrop is just normal RV corner trim. I had to shave off, I had to take it to the table saw and cut off the leg a little bit so it bends without wrinkling. Um, I did not need that trim. The, the poor man's fiberglass sealed that corner perfectly fine. Uh, but I left it ugly because I knew I was going to put a trim on there. And I put the trim on there because, like I said, I, if I ever want to, I can put aluminum I can put aluminum on the sides. The hatch trim I bought off of in, from a guy in Michigan who sells teardrop parts. I don't know. I'll put it right here. Maybe a link in the description box below. I had him ship my stuff to Idaho. Got expensive. Well worth it though. That trim is awesome. It's doing its job. The rubber seal I bought off of Amazon. 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 The hurricane hinge comes off of a big outside kitchen cargo door from an RV. I just took it off. Took the RV door off and built my, uh, my hatch to fit that. And that's what I use for the hatch hinges as a is a uh, hurricane hinge. I do have a little bit of water sitting up there sometimes, but so far it hasn't been leaking, which is great. I like it. These latches right here, they are uh, pop-up camper latches. They use them, a pop-up trailer has four of them usually from what I saw. And that's just what I use to tighten it down and it's been working really good. This is how I built my hatch. I think I will, I thought about covering it with wood but I don't think I'm going to I think I'm going to just cover it with canvas drop cloth just unpainted canvas drop cloth just staple it um, so if this does get wet I see some wet spots and I'm not sure I sealed it better so I think that went away but if it does get wet it can dry out very easily that is a Yakima rack system on top I had to build my own gutter mount to attach those two, these racks, you typically go on a van that has a gutter. So I just took a stock piece of, I can't remember how big it was, 
half inch by quarter inch maybe no it might have been half inch by half inch uh, aluminum stick and I on the table saw I shaved out a notch in there and I screwed it to the side of the trailer I'll get a close-up for you guys I screwed it to the side of the trailer to form a gutter that these can clamp to and it's been working out great we've had four bikes up there no problem I have it just a normal little RV vent in the center of the 14 by 14 with the loud fan it is not a fantastic fan it's just a cheap one uh, that does plenty it's loud so I added on a separate switch I added two bigger computer fans that don't draw as much power they're quieter they don't suck nearly as much air but it's great once you get the the cabin cooled off with the big fan it takes a few minutes and you turn that off you turn the little fans on for all night long you get nice circulation through there this was built in idaho um and it was built with the western states in mind so i did not put an ac in out there when you're camping in the mountains it cools off enough at night that you usually want a heater definitely didn't even consider putting an ac in here now that we live in michigan maybe we'll get into some sticky nights uh who knows so so far we've survived we're about to take this on a trip to the appalachian mountains on labor day week so we'll see how see how we'll survive on the inside i just have a couple cubbies built with some netting in front of the holes to keep things in it's very basic I have a queen mattress in there I bought a, a full mattress and then uh, later I bought a trifold mattress cover cut my mattress up put it in the trifold now we can fold it up and use this for storage while we're traveling which is nice because you always want to bring chairs and all that stuff so we have a switch here for the light outside the door um, I, I put that light right above the door so that if we had to use the bathroom in the middle of the night it wouldn't be hard finding our way back in uh, that does not work the greatest because by the time you get back there's tons of bugs circling around the doorway and as soon as you open that they want to go in with you aggravating we have these two lights above the doors i wish they were a little different it's, it's a bit of a reach if you're laying down and lazy like me got to kind of sit up to reach the light to turn it on i wish the light switch was down further where you could easily reach it we had a set of curtains in here that a friend of ours in idaho sewed and then when we moved in here we decided to update it with the black ones my sister put those together my amish sister i still have to come up with a great way to store shoes as you guys know uh teardrops you have no floor space so shoes got to go somewhere either underneath the trailer where spiders can crawl into or inside the trailer where they get everything dirty and wet dogs are also a pain in the butt with teardrops because they don't wipe their feet before they jump in so if you're camping with dogs in a rainy area you're gonna get a little grimy a little dirty just like a tent i know you nickelback fans are shaking your head no because you guys can't handle roughing it sissies a lot of people put 110 power in their trailer so they can have microwaves, coffee makers, and things like that. Refrigerators, a lot of 12-volt stuff. Um, we wanted to kind of keep it simple. We wanted it to, um, a lot of our camping in Idaho was boondocking. So we didn't have places to plug it in. We didn't want to run a generator. Um, that's why we have the fridge that we do that's ice-powered. That's a great little fridge. Works great for two, three, four days. Um, we, we bring other coolers with our drinks in it. Well, we do have enough 12 volt power to run lights and a water pump uh, it's just really nice to wash dishes and wash hands we have a 12 volt deep cycle marine battery up front uh, that when we get back to the house we just plug it in charge it up again and it's ready to go for it next time this kitchen is relatively new you see this unravel <sighs> if you guys have a fix for unraveling paper towel let me know in the comments below i would love to know what you guys are doing that the wind doesn't just pick it up and just have a whole stream hanging i'm in the process of building a table off to the side where we can set a griddle on and a stove on for cooking so it's just a table that's going to hang to the side of the teardrop and then it'll have a leg a paint stick leg a paint handle uh lengthener thing and we have a quick connect on the sides to plug any appliances in that we want a 20 pound propane tank sits up front with a hose run to the back. Someday I might put 
a hot water heater on the side in a pelican box with a shower. Not sure yet. This will never be done. We're going to continue to add takeaway things. <laughs> uh, awning would be nice, things like that. We'll continue to mess with it as we grow. So I have a power supply here, voltage reader, uh, pump switch, and USB and 12 volt plugs. Regular cabinet doors on RV catches. They work pretty good. You can kind of adjust the tension on them by pinching or widening that part right there. So, so they don't fly open during travel. Once again, right here, some more storage with a basket for spices. Uh, up here, just some open storage. Right here, I have a little lid. I had some room behind the fridge. And this is where we store our collapsible trash can. I believe we got that on Amazon. It is a Camp Chef brand. Just a cutting board, some workspace. Uh, this fridge is a nice powered fridge. My wife find it, find it? Yeah, my wife, wife found it on Facebook Marketplace locally in Idaho. Uh, they used to put these in campers a lot, I think. Um, basically what you do is you put your ice on the top. It takes a 22 pound bag of ice, or almost a 22 pound bag of ice. And then you have shelving, oh, got dirty. It's kind of flimsy and cheap. I wish they would still make this but shelving for your food. And then your food does not get soaking wet in a cooler. We love it. Uh, down here we have some drawers, obviously. Drawers are a must in a teardrop. Just keeps everything organized. Storage, my pump. 12 volt RV pump is back there. All we do is run a hose out from the bottom. There's holes in there um, where I run the hose into a seven gallon water jug that we can refill normally at campgrounds, wherever in cities. Uh, and then we have a drain that just drains into a bucket and then we dump, dump that gray water in appropriate areas. So pretty simple. These two, this cabinet and this cabinet with the removal of a few screws will completely come out of the trailer and there's a pass through. Um, so if I ever want to swap out mattresses, I'll just take these two cabinets out, bring the old mattress. I, I might be able to fit that trifold out the door. I'm not sure, but if not, I can pull it out the back and put a new mattress in. The dry weight came out to exactly 1,420 pounds. The hitch weight was at 190, a little bit heavy. It's still within that 10, per, 10 to 15% um, of your total weight area, but um, I wish it was a little bit lighter. It pulls really nice. Um, it just, it's a little heavy in the tongue. And maybe I can move that battery to the back somehow. I'm still brainstorming on how to do that to get at least that weight to the back and that might even it out. Some. Our 2011 Ford Escape with a 2.5 liter in it can pull it. It's supposed to only have a 150 pound tongue weight though, so it's about 40 pounds heavy. However, the Ford Escape does a better job of handling it than our other two vehicles, I think. Seems like it. I have a, Ford, a 2002 Ford Ranger and then a van. The tow vehicle we use the most is our 1991 Chevy Kidnapper van. It is, uh, it's got the 350 in it. It does fine. Those 350s are a bit slow and they guzzle gas. The, the reason we take that is because it also has a bed in it and our kid kids sleep in there. I just took some paint, some made some stencils, painted the decals on the side. I named it the Hedgehog 2.0. It's actually the second trailer I built. The first trailer I built was just a Harbor Freight 4x4 trailer with a kitchen in it, some slide-out stoves and stuff. It was kind of cool, but step up from a tent. 
we still had to tend it with that trailer. Now we don't. I love it. I love the location of the window. When you're sleeping inside, your head's right there. You can just roll over, look out the window. The cold air is coming in right there. It, I did not plan that out, just how it ended up. It, it's fan, it, and I love it. The curve, the front curve, I like the round shape. That's why I picked it. I don't think I would do it again because it's harder to build, but I think it does look nice. I, I liked it at the time. And a benefit of that was that this round shape makes a great backrest if you want to sit up in the teardrop. It feels good. It's just the ergonomics just happen to be right. Even with my six foot body, it is only four feet tall. I did not go higher than four feet because I wanted to save money on plywood. So probably 40, 45 inches on the inside. It's, uh, but I can sit up very comfortably. My, my head doesn't hit the roof. I am six feet tall. I have a longer torso, shorter legs, and it's, it's been fine. It's, I can easily change shimmy into pants, whatever it is, not a problem. Now you're imagining me with huge body and these short little legs, aren't you? Yeah, get that out of your head. Word of advice, if you are gonna build a teardrop, buy your components and then build the drop around it. I would buy the bed, I would buy the doors, I would buy the windows, the seals that you're gonna use on your hatches or doors, buy your fenders, buy your rack, roof rack system, if you're gonna do that, buy your trim. That way you're, you have the stuff there and you can build according to what you need for that. Um, I procrastinated a lot because I didn't know how to build my hatch system. Um, I kept looking at trim online and it's just tricky trying to build to those specs without actually having the things there. Um, everything turned out fine, but like I said, I kept pushing it off because I was afraid it wouldn't work out. Just a procrastinator like that. That is my teardrop build. It took me six years off and on. Uh, most of it, I. I had a shop for four years, a beautiful shop, but most of the building was done when I lived in areas where I didn't have a garage or shop to build in. So it's just the, the same old thing where drag out all your tools, you work on it for a couple hours, you put all your tools back and the next day you get drag them all out, do it again, clean them up. Um, and the kitchen was all built with no table saw. It was built with a jigsaw and a skill saw and just a bunch of clamps and, uh, level to, to get my straight cuts. It sucks. I want my I want my shop back. Will I build another one? I don't know This one's great. This one's working fine. We'll stick with this one. We love it. My brother wants to build one I think that would be a good project for him So I will definitely help out if he plans on doing that. Thank you guys for watching. We love our teardrop We're gonna keep using it. If you're planning on building one Just do it. Just do it. Don't procrastinate problem solve as you go. You'll come to some points where you're not sure how you're going to do it. Just go ahead and do it. Redo it if you have to. They're fun. They're a lot of work, but it's been fun. Like I said, I'm CJ. This is the Amish Potato. Go check out my Amish content if you're interested. We will see you next time.